And the more you receive the Holy Spirit, the more control He has over your life. Let, let me just read verse 17 to you. Wherefore be you not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Verse 18, and, continuing, and, be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess or debauchery. Debauchery is really the word that emphasizes the true meaning that is in this verse, excess. But be filled with the Spirit. He says, don't be drunk with wine, what is wine? What does wine represent? Wine represents something that you take and you drink and you keep drinking until it takes control of you. The more you drink, the more you continue to drink, the more it has control over you. He says, giving that as an example. He says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. What does it mean then? It means that as you receive the infilling, the Holy Spirit comes into your life and starts to have dominion. And the more you receive, just as the more you drink, the more that alcohol controls you, controls your emotion, controls your mind, controls your mental faculties, controls your action. You lose control of it. He says in that same parallel, he says, be filled with the Spirit. So that means that you have the ability and you have access to the Holy Spirit where you can receive the infilling. And the more you receive the Holy Spirit, the more control He has over your life. The more control he has over your thoughts, the more control he has over your emotions, that you will be guided, directed, commanded by the Holy Spirit. Isn't that wonderful? He says, be filled, keep being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, somebody that is, you know, you, you can't get drunk just looking at the wine bottle. You can't get drunk. You can't get drunk reading the label again and again. You cannot get drunk. How do you get drunk? By drinking. You can read all the scriptures you want. You can't get filled with the Holy Spirit. You can't. You can memorize the scriptures. You can say, I know what it says. But until you get down to where your knees are on the ground and until you reach out and until you take a hold of the Spirit and you allow the Holy Spirit to fill you, you'll never receive the filling of the Holy Spirit. You got to, you got to receive it. You got to ask for it and you got to thirst after it. Someone who drinks wine, you can, eh, la, 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 it's nice, mm, 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 I think it's good, it's nice, yeah, good. You receive nothing, right? That's true. But the Holy Spirit is the same thing. You need to take and drink, receive the Holy Spirit. It starts with giving the example of drinking of wine that is in excess. Debauchery where you become unproductive, where you're a wasted person. This is, has become so excessive that it's destructive to you. You see, there are excesses in our lives many times that keeps us from being thirsty for the living waters. That if we are filled with those things, it takes control of us. Like wine takes control of a drunkard. And this is an example given to us that the things that fill us can actually stop us
from asking for the living waters. There was a time when the Bible records, uh, I believe it's John 6. It's a place where Jesus walked into and there was a man with a withered hand. And it was on Sabbath day and Jesus healed the man. And after Jesus healed the man, the people were so angry. And what did the Bible say? He says that their hearts were filled with anger. When they were so filled with anger, what did they do? The anger controlled them. Controlled them to the degree that they, they decided. They tried to decide among themselves to kill and get rid of Jesus. The anger that filled their hearts drove them instead of doing that which is godly. They think of everything and were obsessed with something that was totally ungodly. Luke chapter 6 and in verse 11 it says that they were filled with anger and because of that they tried to plot to destroy Jesus. You see, what is your heart filled with? What is it that is overly excessive in your heart that stops you from reaching out for the living waters to be filled with the Holy Ghost? And sometimes it can be all these negative emotions that you're so obsessed with. You're angry with this, you're angry with that, and you're so absorbed by things that you're not happy with we need the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit comes upon you He takes control and when the Holy Ghost comes upon you it's like cleansing streams that flow within your innermost being and start to cleanse away all these things that are so damaging and so destructive that will give you poor health that will give you poor conduct that will cause you to be in poor behavior. I don't want to be filled with anger. I want to be filled with the Spirit. We get angry with the times that we're in. We get mad about, you know, the, the, actually Luke chapter 6 speaks about them using the words they were, they were filled with madness. They went crazy. You see, I don't want to be filled with that. I want to be filled with the Spirit. That I would even bear the fruit of the Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. There was another time in John chapter 16. John chapter 16, Jesus was speaking to them about the pain and the suffering, the persecution that will come, that there will be a day when they will be tried for their faith. And in verse 6, the Bible says that because of what they heard, Jesus said, because you heard me say this, you're filled with sorrow. And so because of that deep sorrow, took control of them, possessed them. They don't know how to reach out for what is needed. And so they couldn't receive what Jesus was saying. What is your heart filled with? There can be so much of anxieties and fears that is in you. And in a time like this, Jesus is pointing us to the right thing. He says, get filled with the Holy Ghost. Get filled, get filled with the Holy Spirit. You see, be filled with the Spirit. In the original Greek text, is a, is a present continuous tense present continuous that means right where you are right now wherever whoever at that point in time that you're receiving it's a present truth for you and it will continue to the next to the next season to the next time to the next person it's a present continuous that means keep being filled continue to be filled and he says when you've read it one time many maybe 20 years ago you've read it again the year after you read it again the year after next or after the last 10 years, now you're reading it again. He says it's still a present thing. It's still for you. It's still now. Now. 
it continues to be relevant to this present time for your life and for my life he says get filled if you were filled before he says this is the same word for you today get filled again if you were filled yesterday get some more of the holy spirit be filled once more it's a present continuous keep being filled with the holy ghost there are many things that tries to choke up our lives and block the passage of our communion with God where it is the passage that the Holy Spirit ought to be flowing it gets choked up it gets jammed because it's clogged with so many things filled us there's another place in John chapter 6 when they chase after Jesus when Jesus disappeared from them after he fed the 5,000 and finally when they found him what did Jesus say to him to them he says you saw the signs you didn't understand and because you were filled you came looking for me in other words you didn't come to me because you wanted me you came to me because you tasted and knew that God is good. You came to me because you have experienced my abundant blessing. You've blessed, you know you've been blessed. You've been filled. And what were you filled of? You're filled with the pleasures of this life. You're filled with the riches of planet Earth. You've been filled. You, you have had that stretching your capacity to receive the blessings you've got money you've got houses you've got lands you've got grounds you've got children you've got cars you have memberships you you've got plenty of access to so many things that are the riches of this world now you're full you came looking for me because you know I will bless I can bless you didn't come looking for me just for me just so that you can have me you see our lives can be so full of things that occupy space that belongs to the Holy Spirit we need to unclock ourselves we need to rearrange our lives Jesus said you didn't want me because you got full your stomach is full you got satisfied with meat and drink it ought not to be that way I tell you today that the modern church we've got everything we've got access to everything that money can afford and we have them and this has distracted us this has taken away from us time that we could spend waiting on the Lord like they waited for the coming of the Holy Spirit in the upper room we don't have time for that we look for the quick fix because they're accessible to us the instant stuff we can reach out to this we can get a hold of that we got people that can bring this to us why do we need the Holy Spirit why do we need the Holy Spirit in the church when we have talents when we have giftings when we have things that money can buy to enhance voice, to enhance sound, to enhance the environment and the ambience. Why do we need the Holy Spirit? Because we are full. What are you filled of? What are we full of? We don't need the wisdom from the Holy Spirit where we're so innocent and we're bare before the Holy Spirit and unless the Holy Spirit speaks to us, we're doomed. We don't have those times anymore because we have so many resources that we can access we've got books we've got tapes we've got people that would advise us we pick up the phone and we call the number there are many people that promise us hey you need anything call us or if you if, if you need some help just call me you need to know something just let me know we got mr or miss or google 
whatever it is then we have plenty of access to it until we lose our way that the Holy Spirit is the last resort Church of the Living God hear the cry of the Father hear God today hear Him hear Him speak to you today don't harden your heart when the Spirit of God is speaking to you we can't get anything from God when we come full we have no room for Him and yet how desperate the Father looks at us and says you need the Holy Spirit you need Him you need the Holy Spirit if only you can see it difference it will make when we are filled with the Spirit.